the 60s, the decade of movements, struggles, change. The United States witnessed the assassinations of President John Kennedy, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and Robert Kennedy. Battles over African American and women's civil rights, as well as protests about the Vietnam War, were taking place. However, no one seemed to be noticing the Chicano Civil Rights Movement occurring in the southwestern part of the United States. Discrimination against Mexican Americans and their inability to obtain rights has deep roots in U.S. history. After the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which ended the Mexican-American War in 1848, Mexicans became foreigners in their native land. Manifest Destiny, the U.S. westward advancement into newly acquired territories, displaced many Mexicans, making them into second-class citizens. The loss of land and culture left many Mexicans as outcasts. During the early part of the 20th century, when numerous Mexicans came to the U.S. fleeing the Mexican Revolution of 1910, they arrived in a country that did not welcome them into the melting pot of U.S. society. In 1929, the League of Latin American Citizens was formed to fight against discrimination. Further, in 1948, the American GI Forum was established to secure veterans' rights of those Mexican Americans that fought during World War II. During the 1950s, the Supreme Court case Brown v. the Board of Education and Rosa Parks' refusal to give up her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus ushered in the civil rights movement and nonviolent philosophy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Groups such as the Black Panthers and Malcolm X began using a more militant strategy. The African American civil rights movement was a stimulus for other people of color to stand up and demand their rights. Four activists took the lead in efforts to improve socioeconomic conditions for Mexican Americans and achieve rights guaranteed to them as U.S. citizens. Cesar Chavez organized farm workers in California. Reyes Lopez Tijerina led a movement to regain land taken away from the native New Mexicans. In Texas, Jose Angel Guterres led an effort for political power. And in Denver, Rodolfo Corky Gonzalez encouraged communities to take responsibility and speak up for their rights. Gonzalez waged his fight in the barrios. Dr. Se de Vaca talks about Chicano rights. Justice and the entire Chicano movement were fighting to achieve U.S. civil rights. Although Gonzalez's movement started in Denver, it would gain national attention and bring about needed cultural, political, and social change throughout the U.S. Corky Gonzalez was born in Denver, Colorado on June 18, 1928. He and his seven brothers and sisters grew up in Denver's segregated, tough Northeast Barrio during the disastrous depression of the 1930s. Talking about life during the depression, Gonzalez stated, Though the depression was devastating to so many as a child, we were so poor that it was hardly noticed. Gonzalez attended many Denver public schools, including Baker Middle School, and eventually graduated from Manuel High School in 1944 at the age of 16. Gonzalez boxed his way out of poverty as a well-known prize fighter in the early 1950s. Following his boxing career, he became a tavern owner and a bail bondsman, where he became more aware of the many injustices faced by Mexican Americans in the community. As a result, he decided to become involved in Democratic Party politics, hoping to bring about needed changes in the barrio. Discouraged by politics within the Democratic Party, in April 1966, Gonzalez announced the formation of the Crusade for Justice. Gonzalez hoped the Crusade for Justice would be a national model for organizing urban Chicanos to improve conditions in their communities. The Crusade for Justice proved to be effective in mobilizing Mexican Americans to become active and demand their rights. Dr. Antonio Escobar explains. Really we're fighting for human rights, even though most people believe they were civil rights. At its peak, it grew into a complex organization with dedicated volunteers and hundreds of followers. It created La Escuela and Colegio Tlateloco, had a legal aid service, its own newspaper, credit union, and ballet company. 
the crusade for justice became involved in many conflicts. One in particular came on the eve of the first Chicano Youth Liberation Conference in 1969. No longer apologizing for their ethnic origin, Gonzalez and the Crusade for Justice stressed that students take pride in their Mexican roots. A West High School social studies teacher said, All Mexicans are stupid because their parents are stupid and their parents' parents were stupid. And if you eat Mexican food, you'll look like a Mexican. In response to the teacher's racial slur, the Crusade for Justice encouraged student protests and walkouts. As a result, student walkouts started at West High School and spread to 18 other Colorado schools. The first National Chicano Youth Liberation Conference was held in 1969. It was important because it not only brought Chicanos from all over the country together, but it invited other groups to participate as well. This conference put on numerous workshops on topics such as Chicano art and culture. It also inspired and motivated youth to get involved in their own communities. The most important product of the first National Chicano Youth Liberation Conference is our plan Espiritual de Atzlan. This plan declares solidarity among Chicanos. It also states that Atzlan, which is the five states of California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Colorado, belong to the Chicanos since they were the original settlers of that area and are the ones who worked and toiled the land. Politically, in 1970, Corky Gonzalez was instrumental in forming La Raza Unida Party in Colorado. This national political party was created to address the needs of the United States Chicano population. Although it was short-lived, it did inspire Chicanos to accept political responsibility, and many went on to organize in the two political parties. As a result, over the next two decades, 5,000 Mexican-Americans were elected to political offices nationwide. The publishing of the poem I Am Joaquin in 1967 is what Corky Gonzalez is best known for because it's thought to instill Chicano pride as well as encourage community activism through the recognition of the individual and group rights. Rodolfo Corky Gonzalez is an important historical figure to study locally, regionally, and nationally. Locally, he challenged this system and pushed many young Denver Chicanos to not merely ask for their rights guaranteed to them in historical documents like the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in the Constitution, but to stand up and demand them. Regionally, he thought it was Chicanos' rights as United States citizens to question the authority and the government of this land. Nationally, Corky Gonzalez collaborated with such leaders as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Angela Davis, Russell Means, and Dolores Huerta to hold accountable those people responsible for not addressing the needs and the rights of the so-called undesirables of this country. Corky Gonzalez is best known for four major contributions to the Chicano movement. The first is the establishing of the Crusade for Justice in 1966. This developed into a nationally known cultural center with a large building that included La Escuela and Colegio Lata Loco. The second is the publishing of I Am Joaquin in 1967. The third is the hosting of three National Chicano Youth Liberation Conferences in 1969, 1970, and 1971, introducing the concept of Atzlan. And the fourth contribution to the Chicano movement came through the speeches he presented when he was invited to speak throughout the country. I Am Joaquin by Corky Gonzalez La raza Mexicano, Espanol, Latino, Hispano, Chicano, or whatever I call myself. I look the same, I feel the same, I cry and sing the same. I am the masses of my people and I refuse to be absorbed. I am Joaquin. The odds are great, but my spirit is strong. My faith is unbreakable, my blood is pure. I am the Aztec Prince and Christian Christ. I shall endure, I will endure.